So let's turn over to the book of Romans in chapter 4. And uh, I want to look at something here. I want to read verses 1 through 5, and I want to go from 1 to 1 and 5, 1 through 5 to 19 and 20 through 24. And I want to cover something here. Uh, Don't let me forget before the, at the end of service, if I get my mind somewhere else, just remind me. Somebody say, hey, you got something you was going to tell us. You had something else you wanted to say. I don't want to say it, and I'm going to wait to the end of service, okay? So just don't let me forget it. If I forget it, it's y'all's fault. Y'all's mind might not work like mine. Once mine gets focused on something else, it's gone in another direction. In the book of Romans, in chapter 4, and out of actually the book of Romans, God has been, Paul has been writing. And when you look at Romans, really Paul is just magnifying what Christ has done. And our faith in the work of the cross. And he says that he stresses the fact that Abraham himself was justified or made righteous by faith. Can y'all say the word faith for me? He was made righteous and justified by faith. The Bible goes on to tell us that we are saved by grace through faith. And as we look from the there is a theme, well, there's a couple of things throughout the, the Bible. But this is going to be one of them prominent themes that you're going to constantly see from one book to the next. And that is people placing their faith in God. And we're going to find out that, hey, when you put your faith in Him, it's pleasing unto Him. Amen. And so I want, to a- I want to answer something tonight, and we want to look at something as we get started here. We want to look at the topic of what is faith. If it's so important, if it's something that we see over and over and over again, and it's something that was constantly being talked about, I think that we're going to try our best to define it in the best terms that I possibly can. And maybe I can make this plain, Okay. In the book of Romans, chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scriptures? Abraham believed God, and it was counted or credited unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but a debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. I'm just going to move over just a little bit to verse 19. There's a lot more in here. I would want to, you can go back and read the whole story, but. In verse 19, and being not weak in faith, talking about Abraham, he considered not his own body now dead when he was a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. And he staggered, he wavered, or staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in what? Faith, giving God, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised that what who promised that what God had promised he was able also to perform and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness now it was not written for his sake alone that was in that was that it was imputed to him but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we Believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. 
We ask you, Lord, tonight, let us, let our mind be very alert. Be very attentive, Lord, to the Holy Spirit. And, Lord, uh, use us, Lord, to deliver your word in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, if we go back and we look at the stories of the mighty men and women of God, we're going to find out that they all had one thing in common. And that was an unwavering faith that they had placed in God. And Paul is addressing that Abraham, the founder of the Jewish nation, that he was made righteous not because of works, but because of his faith that he placed in God. And so this, this, the, the, the subject or the headline or the dominating theme that we constantly see from the book of Genesis all the way through is people that have placed their faith in God. And if faith is such a predominant topic and a theme, it should be something that we need to look at. And so I'm going to ask this question, what is faith? What is this? Now, I'll go back in my mind because I went back and studied on this topic for years. And I go back to a time probably at least 15 to 20 years ago as we was dealing with people and I just asked questions, what is this? Because sometimes we will make this comment, well, if I can get enough faith, if I can, maybe it's something that we sit down and we just think about really, really hard. I get, a, I get the impression from some people that we can just think about this and somehow or another we can be moved in it. Now, I'll put this down because I'm just going to ask this question to you. Is faith a thought? Is faith a confession? Is faith some kind of feeling? Can you see faith or is faith invisible? Is it something that you cannot see? Because we got to ask this. We're going to go to the book of Hebrews just one second in chapter 11, verse 1. Because we find in the book of Hebrews that faith is the only expression we're going to be able to find, find that it's defined. That, there is, that we find out there that it has been defined in Hebrews chapter 11. Because we say sometimes we have faith. And so it's one thing to say something, but it's a whole different thing to demonstrate it. How many of y'all know that? It's, it's two different things to say something, and yet a totally different thing to, say, to begin to demonstrate it in our life. So when you go to the book of Hebrews in chapter 11 in verse 1, he says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I'm just going to hang on right here one second because I want to define this. The word substance means foundation. It also means substance is defined in the Greek as an assurance. Faith is my assurance. Faith is my foundation. Faith is also a guarantee of things hoped for. Now, I'm going to also stop right here one second because our definition of hope in our modern English uh, diction, what we would call just in our modern mindset, is hope is something we think, and we say, well, we hope for this. And so we are thinking hope in well, it might happen. It might come to place. Or it might come to pass. But when you look at what the definition of the Bible says about hope, hope is an in a, is in a expectancy. It is confidence. It is trust. Uh, I don't know if uh, this goes way back, and I, it took me some years to try to understand this, but my granddaddy would use the word hope in a sentence and he said, I hope this hopes us. Uh, he would make a comment, and he'd say, well, maybe this will hope us. It's expectancy of something coming to pass. So he says, faith is a substance of things that we are expecting. So faith is the 
Faith is our assurance of something we are looking to come to pass. It is our confidence. It is our trust. But I want to share something else here about faith because one of the, the, the words substance was also what we is defined as title deed. Anybody know what a title deed is? If you have a title deed in your hand, that means that what you have, that is what you possess. Anybody with me? So if we ask you if you had land, if there was an argument about what you own, if you have the title deed, it is the proof that this is mine. Well, this is a powerful word. Because he says faith is our title deed of what we are expecting to take place it's the evidence the word evidence here means conviction so I'm going to just define this in the modern and, and the way that I look at it the way that I've tried to define this the best I can faith is an act of the mind and the heart believing something and have an assurance and conviction that it is true which results in an action in the party or the person of faith it is an expectancy of the of the heart it is a conviction of your heart and your mind that what you are beginning to pray for you have an expectancy that it's going to come to pass and when you have an expectancy of something it, it causes you to go into a motion or activity does that make sense faith is not something that just sits around Faith is an expectancy of something that is about to happen, that you're moved with a conviction so much that you begin to act upon what you're expecting to take place. Does that make sense? So we say sometimes we have faith and we say these things and we use this, but we never have an expectancy. So maybe it's just a hope that or what we would define in our modern terminology well maybe I'm just hoping for it to take place or maybe it just may take place but faith is an action faith is a movement believing and trusting God that he is able to do that which he promised to do hello somebody hang on right here because we're expecting oh let me say this I'm expecting for God to move in a mighty way is that, do I have anybody can testify with me? We're wanting God to move in a mighty way. We're wanting God to do certain things. I hope that when you come, whatever you're doing, if you're expecting God to do something, if he's spoken it and you believe it, then you begin to act upon that which has been spoken to you. That is faith. If somebody called me and said, hey, I've got something I want to give you. Would you come to my house this afternoon and I'm going to make a transaction with you? If you believe that they was able to fulfill the promise that they had spoken to you, you're going to get in your car, put your keys in the ignition, and drive yourself over there. And when you walk to the door, you may even put your hand out and say, I come to receive that which you had said you was going to. To give to me but if you do not have that faith and your life is filled with doubt and unbelief you're not going to go get in your car you're not going over there because maybe you even think in your mind the one that promised this to you I don't know if they're able to come through on their part but Abraham knew better than this he said he staggered not at the promise of God but was full and moved by faith so we, we're, going to just, we're going to define this. Faith is an action. Faith is something that you do. Faith is acting upon what you have heard. Does this make sense? Sometimes I get in my car wheel. Dawn's driving me. Y'all see this all the time. She drives me to church and back home. Can't ask for no better than this. And we'll get to the couple of times we get to intersections and she pulls up there and I'm looking my way I don't know how, maybe she's looking her way sometimes I don't even check I've been with her long enough she's proved herself to be pretty faithful sometimes she still may doubt me a little bit because I say it's all right my way and she'd look anyhow <laughs> If 
am I making sense here? Because you've got confidence in some people in your life that when they tell you something, you don't sit back and wait for something to happen. You've got so much confidence because they have proved themselves to you that when they tell you without even seeing it, you start to act upon it. You know what that is? It's faith. Do you see where I'm coming from with this? So faith is what? Faith is an action. I want you to go take, and go with me to the book of James. In James chapter 2, in verse 17 and 18. We'll look at something here because in the James chapter 2, he deals with about faith and what it, it produces. Some, it produces something in your life. Amen. Faith is an expectancy of something fixing to take place that's going to cause you to begin to act upon that which you have heard. To say that you have faith and do absolutely nothing, I hate to bust your bubble, that's not faith. That's just talk. That's just confessing something that you really don't even believe. Faith is acting upon something. I want to tell you this, I believe that Jesus, I don't know when he's coming back, but whether he comes back in my lifetime or not, I've got a belief that, that whether he comes to see me or whether I go to see him, I don't know what the means are as how we're going to meet each other, but I'm going to meet King Jesus one day. Amen. Amen. And I will stand before him. And somebody said, well, how will you plead then? I'm going to do the same thing I did today. I'm going to plead the blood. <laughs> that, what, what causes you to, what cause, gives you the right to stand here? What would cause you to have the, the ability to have entrance into heaven? I'm just going to say, I am going to claim the righteousness of Jesus Christ, that he's the very son of God and the one that has died for my sin. That's the man I'm putting my faith and my trust in. So when you look at the book of James, and I said it that manner because when you believe something, it begins to change your life. It'd be hard for me to believe. I don't know if you could prove this or not. It'd be hard for you to prove it. That you said that one day you will go and meet the Lord, but there's no evidence about your life that whether you really believe that. Do you see where I'm coming to? Why? Because belief produces an action. Amen? Belief causes me to begin to move in a, one direction or the other. So to say that I have faith and it cannot be proved and you cannot see it, then you would have to say this. You've got dead faith. And the book of James says, can that kind of faith save you? Mm -mm. So go to the book of James in chapter 17. Y'all still with me? Am I, we, we, we still together? He said, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. So what does faith do? Faith produces something. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So I'm going to ask you this. Is it possible for you to demonstrate your faith without works? Is that even possible? There's a question that he put. I think it was put some question marks in there on that. No, he did not on that one he did. It was on the top that he did in verse 14. Thou hast faith, I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Because it's impossible to demonstrate or reveal your faith without any kind of action. So to not be moved, to not move upon what you have heard is not faith. That would be doubt and unbelief. 
Y'all still with me? Faith is a belief and a conviction of the heart on what has been spoken to you and the results of that conviction is an action or a movement on that which has been spoken. Now let's go back here with me just one second. We're just going to turn back to the book of Hebrews just one second. Chapter 11. I want you to go home and look at something and study on something. Because he, in verse 1, he says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I, the elders attained a good report by it. Then in Hebrews chapter 11 is a very interesting chapter because you're going to be able to start to see it gives reports of great men and women of God who were moved by faith. So we're going to go look at this. The Bible says here, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying on his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. And so what was the evidence of Abel's faith in God? His offering of his sacrifice and his gifts in worship. So when you seen that, you would say, hey, this man believes in God. Do you know what Noah's evidence of his faith was? And I'm going to tell you, I, Noah has, um, at the time you look at this, what was the evidence of Noah's faith? Did he sit around and talk about, hey, the, Lord's, uh, the Lord said he's going to come back, and the Lord told me to build a great big ark, and, 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 and it's going to flood, and it's going to flood the whole earth? Did, was Noah's faith demonstrated in what he was sitting around telling stories about? mm, -mm. When you'd have walked up where Noah lived at, you'd have had to ask him because his faith was in demonstration. And you'd have had to ask him, what is that that you're building? And why are you doing what you're doing? See, Noah's faith, God had told Noah, he says, there, I'm going to destroy this earth with a great flood and give him directions and plans on building an ark. Do you know what Noah's faith done? It went to cutting down trees, it went to putting them together, and it went to building an ark, and it went to gathering up animals. People said, what are you doing, Noah? It's never rained like this before. It's, we've never even seen nothing like this. And you telling us it's going the flood he said I am just telling you right now the Lord has spoken to me and what the Lord has said he's well able to bring it to pass I don't know when he's going to do it or how he's going to do it that's my not my job my job is just to do that which he has spoken to me to do I want to tell you something it not only did it take it took a great deal of faith to build something that he'd never seen and nobody else had ever seen I want to, it took some great faith when God told him, says, I don't know if there was a cloud in the sky or what it was, when he told him, says, load up and go get in the ark and close the door. Was his faith invisible? If it had been invisible, it would not have been faith. You know what it had been? It had been doubt and unbelief. And the rain would have started coming, and somebody said, Well, no, why didn't you move? I didn't really believe he was going to do what he said he was going to do. As a matter of fact, we look a little bit further. And when you look at the Jericho wall, everybody knows about this. How did it come down? How did it come down? We could say it come down well by marching around. No, 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 it didn't. It come down by faith. What did God tell him to do? He told him just to march. I, I'm going to tell you something. I've read about this wall, and you can read different stories about it, but I'm telling you, this wall is not some picket fence out in the yard. This wall is big, it's high, and it's wide. I read one, one article that said it was possibly wide enough for two chariots to pass on top of it. 
probably somewhere around 25, 20, 25 foot high and maybe just that wide. And I thought about this. God told him, says, I want you to march around it one time a day for six days. And I thought about this. Every day that they walked around, they got to look at it. And they probably thought, I don't know how in the world that what we're fixing to do is about to cause this wall to come down. That ain't my job to worry with. He just told me to march. He just told me to march. I, I, Lord, help me here. Because I, 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 I'm just going to walk. He told me to walk. How does, I don't know how it's going to come down. It looks like it's impossible, but that's not my job. My job is to do that which he has said to do. I'm just going to march. And so they begin to walk, march. One time a day, I think, for six days, and on the seventh day, they walked around it seven times. On the seventh time, he said, I want y'all to begin to shout and blow the trumpet. I don't know what shouting and blowing the trumpet is going to do to bring in a big old wall of this magnitude down, but that ain't got nothing to do with anything. All I know is do is he said to do this, and that's what we're going to do because my power is not going to bring it down, but my move of faith will. Amen. Doing that which he said to do. Mm. Let's just rest down deep in your spirit because we're sitting around waiting for God to do something when at the same time God's sitting around waiting for you to act upon that which he's already said he come and told Abraham and said Abraham will make you a great nation oh we're gonna go there we got two more more you remember the story of Rahab the harlot I'm telling you man I'm gonna have to just I'm gonna have to contain myself on this all right if I get out of hand somebody say Stacy contain yourself preach it Sunday or preach it some other time because there's a great story of redemption here. And the spies come in to the town, and Rahab hears about it. She has heard, somehow or another, it has made, I don't know if it made front page news or what it done or how it got to Rahab's house, but there was a report that the Israelites and the God of Israel was doing some stuff doing some great things and they was coming in that direction and when she seen the spies she spoke of the God of Israel she said I've heard about the God of Israel I've heard about what he's doing and by faith what did she do? She was saying, I am going to do something with y'all because I need to be on y'all's side and so by faith she took in the spies by faith she did it if she didn't believe that the God of Israel was doing great and mighty things, she would have just ignored him and went on about her business. But that ain't the end of the story. And her faith was so great that when the spies left, she had to ask them one thing. She knew her faith was speaking into the future. She says, when y'all come back to this town, and says, promise me, all I ask for is one thing. I've helped you out, but I need something in return. Promise me that you will spare me and my house. And the spy says, this is what we can promise you. I don't know about the, your, you and your house, but I can tell you this. If you stay put in this place, we are protected. Now, if you get out on the street and you wander here and yonder, there's a story in this. Because there's, there's, there's power when you're up under this covering and being obedient to faith. And so they told her, says, she says, what about my mom and dad? She, all they told her says, they just better be in this house. Just to make sure, just to make sure that you know which house is ours. I'm going to put a scarlet cloth <laughs> hanging out the window. Faith was moving, saying, we believe in that the God that, of Israel is going to come in here, and we believe that you're going to take this city. We believe it so much, I've gathered all my family up and put them in this house. And I even put a symbol on the outside to let y'all know this house. Mm. 
thought about this. My Lord, help me. Y'all ain't helping me out here. Y'all don't go too far. I thought about this because when they come to the town and they was destroying it, somebody said, don't mess with our house. Our house is covered. There's, a, there's been a scarlet rag or towel or something that's hung on the outside of it. I want to tell you tonight, whew, how many of y'all been covered by something? Mm. And Rahab moved in faith. And God come and told Abraham, I'm going to make a great nation out of you. And I'm going to bless you. And man, your descendants is going to be like the stars of heaven. That's the sands of the seashore. All sounds good, don't it? He told Abraham, leave everything you got. Leave everything that you're familiar with. I'm taking you to a new place. Get your family up. We leave him from here and we're going somewhere else. And by faith, you know what he done? He started walking. The Bible said he staggered not at the promises of God. Staggered not. So do you see how faith now results in action? Because faith that does not have any kind of works is dead faith. I want to encourage you this afternoon. I don't know what God has spoken into your life. Know what God's doing in your life. We talk about this all the time. We're expecting God to do great and mighty things. But if God has spoken unto you to move in a certain direction and to do a certain thing, you ain't no longer waiting on Him. He's waiting on you to act in faith. I tried my best to explain this tonight. I hope this has stirred you up on the inside. 